Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host David Tear. Today I'm going to talk about um, some famous unsolved math problems. The one uh, featured on the slide is uh, visual representation of uh, Goldbach's conjecture. That's a famous 300-year-old uh, uh, conjecture uh, regarding prime numbers, which I'll get to later. Anyway, let's begin. So um, here, here's a list of some uh, compilations of uh, what, what various mathematicians have considered uh, lists of famous unsolved problems at the time. Some of these have been solved since these lists were uh, made up. Uh, the first list is a very famous list. This was done by David Hilbert in 1900. They were known as Hilbert's Problems. He, he came up with a list of what he thought were the 23 most important unsolved problems in mathematics, and uh, 15 of them are still uh, uh, either completely unsolved or partially unsolved. Um, and then uh, there was uh, Landau's problems in 1912. He came up with four unsolved problems, which are still on, all unsolved. And then Taniyama came up with a list of uh, 36 unsolved problems in 1955. Those have all been solved since. And Thurston came up with a list in 1982 of 24 unsolved problems at the time that have also all been solved. Um, Smale came up with a list of 18 problems in 1998, 14 of which are still unsolved. And uh, probably the most famous uh, example of this list here is the Millennium Prize problems. Um, I'll get to this in a minute, but there were seven of these problems, and uh, one of them was solved uh, um, by Perlman, I think, in 2002. Uh, there's six, six that are still unsolved. And there was Simon's problems, there were 15 of those, this is also 2000. Now uh, there's less than 12 remaining that are still unsolved. Um, there's also a list called the Unsolved Problems for uh, Arithmetic in the 21st Century. There were 22 of those. Uh, this came out in 2001, they've all been solved. And uh, there was DARPA, DARPA's Math Challenges, there were 23 of those, this is 2007, those have all been solved. Um, one of the most famous uh, mathematicians uh, of recent years was Paul Erdos. I'm sure most of you have heard of him. He came up with his own list of uh, uh, 850, over 850 unsolved problems. I guess these were all um, from, you know, some of his many, many publications. I think he published something like 1,500 math papers. And he was good at coming up with, uh, with uh, conjectures, usually involved number theory. So I guess there were 850 unsolved problems he came up with, and still 588 of those are still unsolved. Um, and he came up with those for throughout his career from the 1930s to 1990s. So anyway, those are just some famous lists of unsolved problems. And I want to go into more detail about the Millennium um, problems. I may actually make another video on these because they're all really interesting. And these were offered by the Clay Mathematics Institute. They still are. There's a million-dollar prize for anybody who can solve any one of these problems that hasn't been solved yet. Only one of them has been solved. The uh, Poincaré conjecture was solved by uh, Gregory Perlman, a Russian mathematician, uh, I believe in 2002, just two years after uh, these problems were announced. And he denied that he, he refused the money. I don't know why, but he refused to, to the million-dollar prize. But he did solve this, uh, and it's a very old problem. Uh, um, but pretty amazing he was able to solve it. And I'm just going to go over these problems uh, briefly. So the first one is called the Yang Mills and Mass Gap problem. Um, I don't even know the statements of all these problems. The Yang Mills... Mass gap problem, though, it's a, it's a problem with important applications in, in high-energy physics. I think what it basically says is that um, in uh, quantum uh, field theory, uh, every version of quantum field theory, there's a mass gap, which means that there's a minimum possible, a particle of minimum possible mass in that theory. So that has important applications for physics, obviously. And then the Riemann hypothesis, this is... This is uh, probably the most famous uh, number theory, unsolved number theory problem right now. Uh, 
So this this concerns something called the Riemann zeta function. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, but but this problem. So what it says is that the Riemann zeta function, which is a complicated special function, uh, that all it's a complex value function, analytic function, and the assertion of the Riemann hypothesis is that all of its non-trivial zeros lie on what's called the critical line in the complex plane, which is a line with real uh, component equal to one half. And this uh, hypothesis, which I think most mathematicians believe is true, uh, would have very, very important um, um, applications in number theory. For one thing, it, it, this, this, uh, the reason why this is such an interesting problem, and there are a lot of generalizations of it as well, is it would tell us a lot of really useful information about the distribution of prime numbers. So this is an important problem that I think a lot of people want to try to solve. Uh, there's also P versus NP. I think this is a really interesting problem. This concerns uh, the difficulty of solving problems. I mean, so there's two different categories of different types of problems, uh, you know, concerning how, uh, their difficulty of solving them. This has a lot of important applications in the theory of computation. So I guess I have to tell you what, what's meant by P and NP. So problems that are, are called P, these are what are, are called uh, easy problems sometimes. It just means that there's an algorithm that can solve them in polynomial time. And NP means that it can be uh, um, stated in polynomial time. So so the, if P versus NP, if, if it turns out to be equals NP, that means, I mean, basically what that means is that, that every math problem, at least in principle, is reversible. So if you can if you can check it, I mean NP is sort of the time it takes to check your solution. If you can check the solution in polynomial time, then there should be a way to solve it in polynomial time. I think most most of my mathematicians believe this one is false, and if it was false, it would be good for cryptography because it would mean that we have secure crypto systems. If it was true, it would mean that in principle, at least every Every uh, uh, crypto system that anybody comes up with, uh, there is a way to break it uh, very easily. So um, anyway, that's it. That, you know, all of these have kind of important applications. And then there's the Navier-Stokes equation. This is an equation involving fluid flow. It's a it's a complicated second order differential equation. But basically, what what this uh, problem is saying is that there are there do exist nice solutions to navier Stokes equations, I guess, for all possible initial conditions. This isn't known whether this is true or not. Uh, and then there's the Hodge conjecture. Um, this is a conjecture about topology. I don't even know exactly how to state it. It's a very complicated problem, but it's basically about topological spaces. That's about all I know about it. Uh, like I said, the Poincaré conjecture, that was the one that's been solved. This has to do, this is another problem involving topology. This, uh, I think the, the statement of this problem is that um, every, uh, um, I think every sphere of dimension greater, every hypersphere of dimension of gr greater than three um, isn't smooth. It doesn't have any smoothings, I think. Dimension three is the, the greatest nice con, um, dimension for spheres, something like that. And then the Birch and Swinnerton Dyer conjecture. I actually worked on this one for a while. This one's really interesting to me. This is a this is a number theory problem. Uh, uh, it has important applications for elliptic curves. Uh, um, I don't know if I can remember the exact statement of this problem, but. Um, um, I think it would, it would, oh yeah, I remember what it says. It says that uh, the rank of every elliptic curve uh, um, is finite, I think. Uh, yeah, and that's a very difficult uh, problem to prove. Um, I, I worked on it for a while. I couldn't do it. Um, and then uh, I came up with my own list of some other really interesting uh, unsolved math problems. I don't think there's any big prizes for any of these, but these are, problems that have been unsolved for a long time and it would be nice if if somebody could solve them um in algebra there's uh um so the yeah the, the cute perfect cuboid problem or oil or bricks the question is whether there exists a perfect cuboid i guess i have to tell you what that means so just imagine you had a 
um, kind of like a rectangular brick um, uh, in all of its sides and all of its external and internal diagonals all have to have integer length. So that seven number is all that all have to have integer length. I think it's known that you can do six but not seven. Uh, in group theory, um, there's uh, the question of whether every finitely presented group is finite. That's not known either. Um, so there's some interesting problems involving transcendental numbers. For instance, there's some uh, important mathematical constants that aren't known whether or not they're transcendental or either whether or not even whether they're not whether they're rational or irrational some examples of that include uh, um, the euler mascheroni constant the uh, um, uh, catalan's constant the kitchen constant and uh, apery's constant it's not known the status of these numbers whether they're transcendental i think most people believe they're all transcendental but it's not even known that any of them are irrational uh, and similarly, uh, there's combinations of known transcendental number, numbers like pi and e. It's, it's been well known for a long time that both pi and e are transcendental, but it's not known whether pi plus e, pi minus e, pi times e, or pi, pi over e. It's not known whether or not the status of any of those numbers, even if they're irrational or not. Uh, combinatorics. Uh, there's a problem called the uh, inline problem. Uh, questions, uh, if you have an n by n grid, uh, what's the minimum number of uh, points you can put on the grid that guarantees that there's no three that are all in line? That's not known in general. And there's a, there's a problem in Ramsey theory that's pretty famous. Uh, uh, what's the value of the Ramsey number R55? That's kind of the click number five. You know, you'd... You know, you want to you wanna know how many people you have to have at a party, what's the minimum number of people you have to have at a party such that uh, ever, for every five people in the party, they're either mutual strangers. Or there exist five people that are either mutual strangers or mutual friends. That's not known either. Um, we have bounds for that number, but we don't know the exact value. Um, dynamical systems. Uh, Probably the most famous unsolved problem involving dynamical systems is the Colatz conjecture. Uh, th this is a very easy problem to state, and uh, it's probably, it may be the most difficult of these unsolved problems. Uh, Paul Erdos even said that mathematics isn't ready for problems like this. And I've known several people who want to solve this problem, mostly amateur mathematicians. It's a very... Um, um, misleading problem. It's very easy to state. So it just says you have a sequence. It starts with any positive integer, like 10, for instance. And then at each step, uh, you get the next number in the sequence, either if the number you have, you're starting with is even, you divide it by 2, so you would go from 10 to 5, or if it's odd, you would replace it by 3n plus 1, so 5 would go to 16, and then 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, it goes down to 1. Yeah, that one went down to one pretty quickly. It knows it, we we know that every number we've ever tried, and I think people have gone up into the billions, maybe even trillions. Uh, they all end up at one at some point, but it still hasn't been proven that any number you start with will always end at one, and nobody really knows how to prove this. It's a very very complicated problem. Um, and game theory. Um, uh, it's known, I think I think uh, von Neumann proved this back in the 1950s, that chess, there is a optimal strategy for playing chess that guarantees that if both players play by the, op the best possible moves, each player makes the best possible moves under any circumstances. Uh, if, you, if, if both black and white, white and black play with that strategy, uh, um, uh, von Neumann proved that the game uh, at least has to end in a draw. Somebody will win. And uh, I mean, it, it, I, I guess I guess there has to be a draw. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it white starts the game. So the question is, what's the outcome? You know, uh, who who wins? I mean, does it end in a draw necessarily, or does white win, or does black win? That's not known either. Um, and then in um, number theory, uh, there's a couple uh, um, uh, unsolved problems concerning perfect numbers. Uh, first of all, are there infinitely many perfect numbers? These are numbers for which all the non-trivial factors add up to the number. Six is the smallest such number. 
there aren't very many of these that are known. There's only 51 that are currently known. I think most mathematicians uh, believe there are infinitely many, but nobody's proven that yet. And then another interesting problem concerning perfect numbers is whether or not there's any odd perfect numbers. I think most mathematicians think there aren't. And if there is an odd perfect number, it has to have at least 2,200 digits. So they have to be very big if they exist at all. And then there's a lot of uh, unsolved problems concerning prime numbers. I already mentioned one of them, the Riemann hypothesis. That's one of the seven millennium primes problems. That's probably the most interesting one of all, the uh, unsolved problems concerning primes. But there's some other ones. I, I mentioned the gold box conjecture at the beginning of this video, uh, whether or not uh, every even number greater than two can be expressed as the sum of two primes, I, I think was known up to something like 10 to the 18th power, and it's believed that it is true that every even number is the sum of two primes, but nobody's proven this yet. And then there's also the twin primes conjecture that uh, asserts that uh, there's infinitely many uh, twin primes. These are primes that differ by two, like 5 and 7 or 11 and 13. Um, and then the last one I have listed here concerns Gaussian primes. These are uh, kind of an extension of prime numbers to the complex plane, uh, complex value primes, if you like. Um, you can extend the notion of prime numbers to what's called Gaussian primes, which are Gaussian integers. Those are just um, complex numbers where the real and imaginary components are both integers, but not only that, um, we can also define certain subset of those that we call Gaussian primes. And the question is whether or not um, you can walk uh, through all the Gaussian primes taking a, a step uh, of a limited size. That's not known either. So anyway, those are just some examples of some interesting unsolved math problems. And uh, it'd be great if any of you could solve these. I don't know if I'll ever be able to. But anyway, um, that, that completes my um, talk for today. Thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.